Hey, how's it going? So learning how to build a PC, it might be a bit intimidating, especially if it's your first time. We've all been there. We've all started somewhere. And uh, I know it seems like a lot, but trust me, it's not. As long as you're careful, choose the right PC components, which is as easy as going over to PC Part Picker or using a build guide just like this one, which has all the parts linked down in the description below, by the way, would be good to go. It's on to patience time. Put on a nice podcast, maybe your favorite playlist, and get to work. All you really have to do is put everything in the right slots and connectors. Think of it as uh, Legos for adults, right? You should be able to do everything with little experience, especially with all the information available today and with this guide. We're gonna walk you through every single step. Soon you'll be putting all those expensive components together and it'll be a breeze. Before you know it, you'll be a proud owner of one of the best PCs, one that you've actually built with your own two hands. You ready? Let's go. GVGmall.com is a great website that offers loads of different keys. They actually have some of the cheapest Windows 10 Pro keys that I've seen around $16. However, use code YM18 at checkout and you're gonna receive 18% off your order. And this brings the total price to under $14 before fees and taxes. You check out PayPal so you know it's secure and it's super simple to buy, view, and activate your Windows 10 key, but it doesn't stop there. They have Steam, Origin, and Uplay CD keys, console players, they got you too with PSN and Xbox cards. Don't forget to check the link in the description for more info and use code YM18 at checkout. All right, so before we build it, let's quickly go over the parts. We have the i7-10700 for the CPU. If you can, go for the K variant. Unfortunately, things were slim pickings due to current situations. Still with eight cores, 16 threads, and a max boost of 4.8 gigahertz, it's more than enough for what we need. And we'll handle Premiere Pro, Photoshop, uh, and any game we really throw at it with ease. I find Intel to be much more stable when it comes to the productivity side of things. However, if you prefer AMD, the Ryzen 7 3700 offers very similar specs for less monies. Now for the motherboard, we got the Asus Prime H470M+. Heatsink, the wonderful Dark Rock Pro 4. For the GPU, I wanted the RTX 2070. However, only the Zotac RTX 2060 was in stock. However, pleasantly surprised with its performance so far at 1440p gaming. For the PSU, we have the Game Max 600 watt bronze certified PSU. Uh, it's another item that was last left in stock when I was choosing the parts. You ready for it? 64 gigabytes of G Skill Ripjaw RAM clocked at 3100 megahertz. You'll be fine with 32 if you're trying to save a bit of money, but since this is going to be the main editing rig, that's what I opted for. Lastly is our storage, 256 gigabyte SSD for our boot drive and our secondary 512 gigabyte SSD for everything else. I definitely plan on upgrading to more storage down the line and I would highly recommend you do too as well. For the case, I wanted to go simple, small and clean. The Thermaltake S100 is exactly that. I love the aesthetics here. All right, first let's go ahead and unpack the motherboard from its packaging. Now let's place the motherboard on top of the cardboard box that it came in or a nice clean desk surface would be ideal. Uh, safe here, never ever place it on carpet or fabric, anything like that. Next, let's go ahead and open the CPU latch. Remove the plastic cap uh, and keep this safe you know, just in case you gotta return the motherboard later on to the manufacturer or you plan on selling it in the future. Next, let's go ahead and insert the CPU. Make sure to match the notches and indicators on the CPU to the socket and just slightly drop it in. Do not apply pressure. It should lie flush without any force. Next. Go ahead and close the latch to secure the CPU. Just a heads up, this will require a bit of pressure. Now let's prep the board for the CPU cooler. Grab the bag from the CPU cooler box labeled Intel and remove the contents. First, start with the CPU backplate. Insert the included screws into the backplate. The screw should lie flush with the backplate. Now insert the rubber washers over those screws. Do this for all four corners. 
Fit the back plate into the four holes on the back of the motherboard. Carefully flip the motherboard and the back plate right side up. Now let's go ahead and install the standoff screws into the back plate screws to keep everything in place. We're gonna do so using a cross pattern. So one of the screws top left, then bottom right, then top right, then bottom left, making sure not to fully tighten until all the screws have been installed. Now let's go ahead and place the two CPU brackets that came in the Intel labeled bag on the standoff screws we just installed. The first bracket will go above the CPU and the second one below it. Screw both brackets down. Now let's go ahead and install the RAM. Unclip the RAM locks on the motherboard slots. Match the RAM stick notches found on the RAM to the slots on the motherboard and insert the RAM carefully using light and even force across the sticks. Before we can install the CPU cooler, we have to apply some thermal paste. Thankfully, in the box of our CPU cooler, specifically the Dark Rock Pro 4, they include the perfect amount of thermal paste. I'm applying using the X method. However, most people are familiar with the P size dot. Either way, just remember that less is more here. All right, so let's go ahead and insert the mounting bridge into the CPU cooler. With that done, we can go ahead and place the CPU cooler on top of the CPU, making sure that the mounting bridge meets the brackets we installed prior. Now let's go ahead and secure the bridge to the brackets using the included screws. Make sure to do this for both sides. With the CPU cooler installed and secured, we can install that second included fan. Slide the 135 millimeter fan through the middle of the cooler and connect the fan to the cooler using the included fan clips, which should snap into place and everything should be nice and secure. It's time to connect our CPU fans to the motherboard. The first is gonna go into the four pin header located near the RAM slots labeled CPU fan. The second into the four pin header labeled chassis fan. Now grab the case, pop in the IO shield that came with your motherboard. Back to the case, remove the left side panel and in the hard drive bay, you'll find access to the included hardware for your case. It's time to place the motherboard into the case and slide it in until the ports fit through the I.O. shield and the standoff holes line up with the pre-placed standoff screws. Secure the motherboard to the case with the included hardware that you just pulled out of that hard drive bracket. Be gentle here, you don't want to tighten them too tight or you'll end up cracking the PCB, which is not a good thing. Now it's time to install our case fans. We have 520 millimeter fans here and we're gonna install them with the included hardware. We're gonna place two at the top and loosely screw in all four screws on both fans before tightening them all down. Install the other three fans to the front of the case using the same method. All right, now it's time to install both SSDs using the mounting plates located on the side of your case. We're gonna secure the SSDs to the mounting plates with the included hardware. Again, you don't really wanna go too tight here. If you have a hard drive, that'll be placed into the hard drive bracket where we found the included hardware for our case. So take the cables that came with your PSU and connect them to your power supply. Now let's pop in the power supply into the case. Then thread the cables through the case and push the PSU until it's nice and flush with the case, making sure that the PSU does not choke any cables and attach it with the included screws. 
Take the 24 pin power connector, feed it through here. The eight pin CPU power connector, feed it through here. And the eight pin PCI express connector through here. Time for our case headers. Feed the 3.0 USB connector through here. The USB 2.0 connector through the bottom right here. Take the HD audio connector through the bottom as well. And the front panel connectors can go through here. Flip the case over and connect the wires that we just fed through. Everything is labeled nice and clearly, so just take your time here and you'll be fine. And remember, you can always look back at your motherboard's manual if you're not sure about something. The front panel connectors are the hardest to work with because of how small they are and it was kind of hard to show on camera but again just take your time here everything's labeled. Alright now with those annoying cables out of the way let's install the GPU. Unlock the PCIe slot by pressing down like we did with the RAM. Slide the GPU into the PCIe slot and press down on either side. You should hear the clip lock back into place. Secure the GPU by screwing it into the rear bracket. Now let's go ahead and connect the 8 pin connector to the GPU. All right, we're almost done with cables here, but we need to connect our fans. Take the Molex cable included with the fans and plug it into the Molex connector that's on the PSU cable. After that, you can go ahead and feed it through the front for our three fans. Now just connect all three fan headers to the cable that you just fed through. So now it's time to repeat the same steps for the top and rear fans. Connect your Molex cable, feed the cables through here, now connect all three fans. Now go ahead and take both your SATA cables, go ahead and plug them into your motherboard and let's feed them out through the back to your SSDs. Now we can connect the SATA cables to both SSDs. Now take your 15 pin SATA power cables from your power supply and plug them both into your SSDs. With everything connected, we can go ahead and start cable managing. Grab some zip ties and just start cleaning up the wires careful to not pull or tug on anything too hard. We just want a nice clean look here. Now place both side panels back on your PC. We have one last step to do, boot your PC into the BIOS. All right, so in the BIOS, you can see that our RAM is only running at 2100 megahertz. If you wanna fix this and unlock your RAM's full potential, we're gonna to have to change one thing. Go down to XMP and make sure that it's enabled instead of disabled. After that, save, exit, and reboot. All right, so now all you gotta do is install some drivers for your GPU and motherboard. You're gonna be set. Sit back and enjoy. That's it, I'm Yeti Machete. If you made it this far, Smash like, drop me a subscribe, and uh, did you know that a banana is a berry, but a strawberry isn't? Weird, I know. Anyway, I'm signing off. Catch you guys in the next one.